Hola amigos, que tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain and the macro outbreak of COVID-19 in Mallorca is still dominating headlines around the country with more than a thousand people now testing positive to COVID-19. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel by buying merchandise and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, that macro outbreak of COVID-19 in Mallorca is still dominating headlines today. And there are now 249 students being forced to quarantine in a hotel on the island. As we can see here, macro outbreak in Mallorca, 249 students confined to a hotel on the island and three escapees. The Palma Belva Hotel is one of the most recognizable hotels on Palma's Paseo Maritimo, a four-star establishment located near the sea and with recently refurbished rooms. It is the accommodation that the Balearic government has contracted this summer to accommodate tourists who become infected with the coronavirus during their holidays and do not develop symptoms or for those who are considered close contacts of those who are positive. Since Monday, the establishment has been housing 249 students from various parts of Spain who have had direct or indirect contact with more than 1,000 young people who have tested positive on their return to their communities of origin after their end-of-year trip to Mallorca. Of these, 26% or 62 people tested positive. A further 13 are confined to other hotels on the island, making a total of 262 isolated by the mega outbreak, and three have absconded. So there we go, luxury confinement accommodation in Mallorca for people who are infected with COVID-19 or who are close contacts with somebody who is infected. And as we also saw there, now more than a thousand positive cases reported of COVID-19 from those end of year school breaks. However, not everybody is happy about those students being forced to quarantine in Mallorca and a group of parents of pupils from Cadiz confined in Mallorca denounced the Balearic government. A total of 45 students from San Fernando in Cadiz who are on an excursion to Mallorca have been confined and installed in what is known as the COVID hotel in Palma where they are isolated. This is a measure that the parents do not agree with and which has led some of them to file a complaint against the Balearic government considering that an arbitrary and unjustified criterion has been applied to this measure. As the mother of one of these students, the lawyer who filed the complaint, explained to Europa Press there may be illegal detention and prevarication on the part of the authorities of the govern. In this sense, she pointed out that it is inexplicable that only those who are on excursions are considered to be in close contact. She wondered whether the rest of the people, including foreigners who have been in the same places, are not close contacts. So a possible case of illegal detention and prevarication according to one of the mothers down there in Cadiz and asking the question why it is only students that are being singled out by the Balearic government. Now health officials here in Spain are worried that young people are getting a bit of a bad rap at the moment and is calling for young people not to be stigmatised but is asking them to maintain a minimum of respect for etiquette with older people. The Secretary of State for Health, Silvia Calthon, said on Monday that it is not fair to stigmatise young people at a time when infections are once again on the rise among the unvaccinated population and after the massive outbreak on a school trip to Mallorca. At the same time, the director of the Centre for the Coordination of Health Alerts and Emergencies, Fernando Simon, called on them to maintain a minimum of etiquette respecting infection prevention measures when interacting with older people, even if they are already vaccinated. So according to health officials, young people shouldn't be stigmatised, but they need to maintain a minimum respect for etiquette when it comes to dealing with older people. Now with this mass outbreak of infections in Mallorca, you might be asking the question, why didn't the Balearic government demand a negative PCR test for people visiting the island? And it's a good question, and it seems strange that it wasn't the case, but they have decided to rectify the situation. As we can see from this headline, the Balearic Islands to require full vaccination or PCR for groups of more than 20 travellers after macro outbreak. On Monday, the government approved the new regulation for organised trips to the Balearic Islands following the outbreak of the study trips, which will oblige all groups of more than 20 people to arrive on the islands with a negative PCR after 48 hours or to have a full vaccination schedule. Groups attending authorised events, congresses and sporting competitions and training sessions are exempt from this measure approved by the Council to govern. So a good move there by the Balearic Islands government, but I think they're just a little bit too late. Now another group of people that need to prove that they are fully vaccinated or have a negative PCR test when they arrive in Spain are the British, and that of course was announced yesterday by Prime Minister Sanchez. As we can see here, Spain to require a negative PCR
PCR or full vaccination for British tourists. Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez announced on Monday that Spain will require a negative PCR or full vaccination for all citizens coming from the UK to Spain. The measure will begin to be applied within 72 hours. Sanchez justified the measure on the fact that the data coming from the United Kingdom are worrying because they have infections well above 150 cases per 100,000 inhabitants in 14 days. For this reason, Sanchez said Spain had to take some additional precautions with regard to the arrival of British tourists. So worrying health data coming out of the UK, and that is how Prime Minister Sanchez justified his decision. We saw the other day that Angela Merkel is pushing for an obligatory quarantine period for people from the UK that travel to the European Union. So I think that Pedro Sanchez decided to meet her halfway with that decision. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation in Spain, and we can see that the accumulated incidence rate for the last 14 days countrywide has now hit the 100 mark again. There are still 2,495 people hospitalized around the country with COVID. COVID, and there are 644 COVID patients currently in ICU. If we have a look at one autonomous community, Cantabria, that has seen cases spike in recent days, we can see that their accumulated incidence rate is now up to 160, and daily cases are up 142% on previous data. But as we can see, this increase in cases is not being reflected in hospital admissions. When it comes to the vaccination campaign, we can see that exactly 35% of the population have completed their vaccinations, and 52.25% of the population have received at least one dose of their COVID-19 vaccine. Now we all know that Spain has a reputation of being a party country. People love to get out and about and celebrate virtually everything they can. But as we have seen in recent times with the problem of street drinking parties, a lot of these parties here in Spain can get out of control very quickly. And residents in one city in the south of Spain are complaining that the party atmosphere in their neighbourhoods is out of control. As we can see from this headline, from Malaga to Malaguf, low-cost tourism lands in the capital of the Costa del Sol. Like every weekend since the authorities allowed the reopening of nightlife, social networks have been filled this Sunday with comments from residents of the centre of Malaga describing the uncivic behaviour they have witnessed during the early hours of the morning. Another night of shouting, screaming and noise in Victoria Street. Drunken kids in the street giving it their all, explained one of them, to which another added it was similar to the time of the Botellon in the Plata de la Merced. Is it a temporary thing or have we become the city of herds of fools who go out at night? Comments that are a fair reflection of the situation that the residents of the main leisure area of the capital of Malaga have been suffering for years and that have returned to their annoying reality after the confinement. So again, street drinking parties and the famous Botellon causing problems for residents in some central parts of the city of Malaga and residents there complaining that their city is turning into the Magaluf of Andalusia. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Michael regarding the Spanish continuance of wearing masks, I think I have found the reason. I'm reading an excellent book called Ghosts of Spain. In one chapter, the author discusses the awe in which Spanish people in general hold of anyone dressed in a white coat, doctor, nurse, pharmacist, you name it. They tend to believe and submit to anything they say. Bingo! Yeah, Michael, thanks for the comment. I haven't read that book, The Ghosts of Spain, I think by the author Giles Tremlett, who is also a journalist here in Spain writing for various British publications, but I will definitely add it to my list of books to read about Spain, and that list is getting very, very long. And that might be one of the reasons why a lot of Spanish people seem to do what they're told. They don't like to question authority, especially when it comes to health matters. And you can definitely see that at the moment here in Spain when it comes to wearing masks outdoors. A lot of people very reluctant to take their mask off, even when there is not many people around. But I think another one of the reasons is that the messages from the governments here in Spain are not very clear when it comes to wearing masks outdoors especially when you are in a busy part of the city and it is very difficult to maintain that 1.5 meter distance between yourself and another person. And I imagine that a lot of people just think that it's easy to keep wearing the mask outdoors, especially when there is some doubt whether that distance can be maintained rather than having to take it off and put it back on continuously. But as I said yesterday, we'll see if this mask wearing trend continues the further we get into the summer months. One here from WM. Hi Stuart, love the videos and appreciate the time and effort that you exert to post them each day. In the videos yesterday and today, you mentioned how hot it gets in your garden during the midday hours. Could you tell us how hot is hot? I write this now from a suburb 30 miles from New York City. It's 6 p.m. and the temperature is 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius. And the dew point temperature is 24 degrees Celsius. 
Thank you very much. Will. Yeah, Will, thanks for the comment. What I'll do is I'll go to my phone and get the exact temperature for you now. And it's currently 24 degrees Celsius with a top today of 31. And it's going to heat up later in the week. Tomorrow, 33. Thursday, 34. Friday, 35. And there's currently 33% humidity. And when it comes to sitting out here in the afternoon, I find that anything over 30 starts to become a bit of a problem. At the moment, it's not too bad. But after 1 p.m., so 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., it's almost impossible to sit out here. In fact, the only reason I come out here during during those hours is to take a dip in the pool. One here from HK Singh, in Portugal most of the locals were wearing masks outdoors. Yeah, HK, thanks for the comment. I'm not really sure what the mask rule is in Portugal. I know that when I was there last year you didn't have to wear them outdoors if you could maintain space between you and another person. And I got the impression that the mask rules in Portugal were a lot less strict than they were here in Spain. But I think that changed earlier in the year when Portugal went through a very bad period with COVID-19. And I think the problem there at the moment is also starting to get out of control. The government there recently announced that they were extending their state of calamity as it is known in Portugal or state of emergency or state of alarm as it was called here in Spain and I think it's going to be in place until the 11th of July. But the borders between Spain and Portugal are still open. I don't think they have closed them again and I don't know how many people have traveled from Spain to Portugal in recent times. I'm still hoping that we can get there sometime in the near future but it is going to depend on the health situation in Portugal. So let's hope that it improves. One here from Daz222. Ola Stewart, I'm in the Canary Islands. Do you know when the Janssen vaccine is going to be available in Spain or even in the islands? Thanks for the great videos. D. Yeah, Daz, thanks for the comment. I'm not sure what the situation is in the Canary Islands when it comes to the Janssen vaccine. I know that here in Madrid, they are using Janssen. My girlfriend got Janssen a couple of weeks ago and a few other people I know also were injected with Janssen. So they are using it in different parts of the country. And the main advantage of Janssen for many is that it's only a one dose vaccine vaccine, not two like all the rest. So I think it depends on supply and if they're using Janssen in other autonomous communities around the country, they should also be using it in the Canary Islands. One here from Joy. Hi Stuart, still around watching your videos. Ha ha, only mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. I think the Spanish know how to treat hot parts of the day just like the Indians. The refrain above believed to have been coined by Rudyard Kipling. I think wearing masks in towns and cities should continue. There are some in my small town where it's impossible to keep your distance. I have a glasses chain to hang my mask around my neck just in case I can't keep my distance as it's only fair to protect your fellow humans. Thanks for everything, Stuart. Joy, Galicia. Yeah, Joy, thanks for the comment. I'm glad to see that you are still watching the videos. And you're right, only mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. And it is true that if you go to some of the hottest cities here in Spain, for example, Córdoba, Seville, for example, you do not see anybody outdoors from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. or even later on a hot day. And when it comes to wearing a mask outdoors in towns and cities here in Spain, you're right, if the city or town is very busy, you can't maintain your distance, probably better to leave it on. And I've also seen quite a few people with a setup similar to yours where you have your mask on a chain around your neck, similar to your glasses. And finally, one here from Gilbert. Do you think things will settle down in February and March 2022 for our planned trip to Alicante? We are both fully vaccinated and plan on celebrating our 50th wedding anniversary on the Mediterranean. What do you think? Gilbert and Lorraine from Canada. Yeah, Gilbert, thanks for the comment. And to be honest, I have no idea what Spain is going to look like in March 2022. Hopefully, and I say hopefully, we will not get a repeat of what happened last year at Christmas time and that subsequent third or fourth wave of COVID-19 that we experienced in the months afterwards. I think at the moment we are in experimental times here in Spain. People are getting vaccinated, but we also have new variants of COVID-19 around. And we're just going to have to wait and see if the COVID vaccines are effective against these new variants. As we have been told, since the beginning of this pandemic. It's all about the hospitals. We can't have the hospital system collapse. And even if case numbers go up, but the hospitals don't collapse, we should be okay. But unfortunately, it's not easy to see into the future when it comes to this virus. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.